Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another Wicked Wednesday here on the House of Horror. Today I'm going to be reviewing the film The Nest from 1988. And uh, if you'll notice, 1988 is the same year as the movie Slugs that I reviewed two weeks ago was released. So lots of, uh, lots of animal attack movies coming out around this period of time. And this is from the Roger Corman Classics Collection. Uh, this was released by Concord. Uh, one of his older companies and produced by uh, his daughter Julie Corman I believe but it's directed by Terrence Winkless and uh, he hasn't really done a whole lot other than uh, directed a bunch of episodes of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers back in the day did uh, some uh, Beetleborgs whatever that show is called and some other TV work and it stars Robert Lansing, uh, Lisa Langolas and Frank Lutz and uh, Lisa Langolas, you may recognize from, uh, she was in class in 1984. She was also in Happy Birthday to Me. So she's done a few horror films herself, and she's still working as well. She's doing lots of uh, TV stuff. But uh, it's a cool film. It's another one I watched a lot as a kid. Uh, it's about cockroaches, obviously, if you can tell from the front cover here, which I love this cover art. It's really cool. But um, it is about a, uh, there's this, uh, this, this company and they're trying to make a cockroach that eats other roaches because cockroaches always become uh, they always become immune to the uh, pesticide that they use so uh, we'll do this I create the roaches and uh, in one way or another they get uh, they escape on this island off of the coast of uh, Maine I believe it is somewhere in the uh, the uh, New England area of the US it's actually filmed in Los Angeles and outside of Los Angeles, but takes place in uh, off this island uh, off the coast of Maine somewhere. But uh, the company's called called Intec, and these roaches get out, and they eventually start eating meat and start eating people, and uh, they eventually uh, develop a mutation to where everything that they eat they turn into. So there's uh, cat roaches, there's human roaches, and uh, that's actually the climax of the film. There's a, there's a human roach. I'm not going to spoil that part, but that's the, uh, the end of the film is the main part that I remember from a kid. It's got some really gory stuff in there, but uh, there's a uh, kind of a love triangle. There's a sheriff of this small town, and uh, he's recently become sheriff. He's kind of, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of experience, and uh, his his ex girlfriend comes back in town, and uh, they're uh, you know about to rekindle things. And turns out he has a relationship with another lady in town. So it's kind of like this love triangle going on in the midst of this cockroach outbreak that uh, you know they start uh, start start terrorizing the town. But uh, it also has a character called uh, I think his name is Homer. He's uh, the the Pest Man, who kind of reminds me a lot of the guy in Arachnophobia, but this came out two years before Arachnophobia was released, so you could say Arachnophobia was kind of copying this film because he's kind of, kind of a quirky guy, you know, kind of a, you know, odd, jokey guy. So you can kind of parody him with the uh, John Goodman character in Arachnophobia, um, which is obviously a much more well-known film than this film. But um, the the roaches, they do use real roaches, but first half of the film is really shot from the perspective of the swarm of insects so it's really a lot of jaws like camera movements where it's low to the ground and you know you're getting a you know a, a, a perspective point of view from the the actual roaches and then the second half of the film you actually get to see a lot of roaches and you get to see a lot of gore and uh, the gore is uh, is mix in this film I'd say there's there's some bits of gore that's really good in the film there's some other that's not so good there's some uh, puppets in the movie that don't look very good but the end sequence is really cool I would say it's it's worth watching the film just for the end sequence and uh, I would say this is the best of the movies I've reviewed so far with the the uh, you know the animals attacking so I'd recommend this one and they do use real cockroaches not like uh, most movies you see when they say roaches, it's just a bunch of Madagascar hissing cockroaches, which obviously is not the, the kind that we have here in the United States and probably all over the world. Not the common, you know, pest insect. It's the, you know, the big ones. They're, they're really big. You see them in the pet stores, like this long. 
But that's the ones I usually use in movies just because they're probably easier to deal with. But uh, there are a few in the film, but not uh, the the basic swarm of insects is usually real cockroaches, which is kind of cool. You know, it, it plays to, to everyone's uh, kind of natural fear of cockroaches. I don't really, I'm not afraid of cockroaches. My wife's terrified of them, so she refused to watch this movie with me. But uh, I'm sure this played into a lot of people's fear. A lot of people have a phobia of uh, roaches and insects and stuff, so probably helps make this film uh, more scary but uh, I would recommend this one it is cheesy as much like the other uh, Ro Roger Corman films you know he released throughout his career really low budget stuff that uh, you know he would turn into a profit so uh, check it out let me know what you guys think thanks for watching peace